Hey everyone, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you the creative goodness that I've been working on the past week. A huge thank you to everyone that hung out with me while we worked on our orange peels during a live stream. And I always appreciate when you guys watch my videos and leave such wonderful comments for me. In that live stream, I mentioned I did not want to leave this sitting in blocks for a long period of time, something that ends up being a UFO and we end up working on it next year and it just never gets done. So I went ahead and I did all of the buttonhole stitching all by machine and I sewed the blocks together. Now, yes, this is not a finished project. But it has a better chance of becoming finished when I go ahead and get it all set up for quilting and I put it in my to be quilted basket and then when I have one of those crazy days where I feel like doing a bunch of quilting, I'll just get it quilted. Right now I'm thinking white thread and a bunch of free motion quilting in here. Just kind of wiggle squiggle, maybe some nice little swirls to go around just to fill in those spaces. Take that white fabric and get it to set down a little bit more so that the batiks pop up even more. Every time I look at this and I see the circle part of it, this hair always reminds me of those dolls that have the hair that goes back like this, sometimes with a little ponytail and then you have the little eyes and the mouth. And I, it's, that's what I see every time I look at this. But I love the way the colors are. Even though I just used random colors from a previously cut charm pack, I think it went really well together because batiks just go nicely together. And this is just a really scrappy version of it. The white fabric pops up nicely. I do wish I'd have paid a little bit more attention to the background fabrics, especially when I was sewing it together, because I have these three here that are all the same background a scalloped white these two are the same background so it just it stands out a little bit to me when i look at it just because these i can really see the background and these all look plain and it's just because they're really tight scallops to it but it's okay once it gets quilted and it's all going to blend together and it's not going to matter just a little thought if you're making something like this and you're using scrappy backgrounds to think about that also, maybe lay out your backgrounds first, and then put your little melon peel, orange peels on it. And, set, and that way you can spread your color of your orange peels around everywhere, but your background is already done first. Or just do it willy nilly like I did and it really, it works out, it's perfectly fine. It's just sometimes things like that will catch your eye and if you don't want that to happen, I'm giving you a heads up. So this is 19 by 19 right now before I start quilting it. Depending on how much I quilt it, it might draw it in a little bit to maybe 18 and a half inches. I think that's a nice little mini wall hanging to put up, maybe a table topper. And if it gets down a little bit smaller, it could be a pillow cover for an 18 inch pillow. I worked on the quilted drawstring bags for this Friday's upcoming tutorial. This is the one we are going to be making, this really fun charm pack from the Christmas colors with the red and the green, and I had this ho-ho fabric. It went really nicely together, so I used that for the little casing channel there and the lining. And then I used some more, and I added the ho-ho fabric to the bottom, and I used one last row, so this one is five by five, and this one is five across and four down, and then I just added a little bottom to it. It just makes it a little bit easier to go ahead and make the gusseted bottom on that, so you don't have to worry about cutting into charm squares here. Even though that looks perfectly fine, it's not like it's a horribly noticeable thing. It blends in well. I'll talk about that more in Friday's video. And this is the one for the sunflowers. I kept all of the sunflower fabric out and I just went with the fall leaves and the brown colors. I thought that turned out really nice. I don't know if you can see, this has got a sparkly fabric for the inside and the topping. I thought it was really fun to have a nice contrast in that little top drawstring band and then to just go ahead and use the same fabric for the lining because I already have it out so why not go ahead and cut it. With this size bag you can make the lining and the little drawstring out of one fat quarter. That's a good deal. These three will be in the shop 
by the time you see this video, hopefully. Otherwise, there are other ones that are already in the shop. And if this is something you would like to purchase, just let me know and I'll make sure it's in the shop for you. I think this one is my favorite. This weekend, I worked on a scrappy apple mug rug with my patrons. I found this on the crafts, crafts, I found this pattern on the craftsy, crafts, boy, that's a tough word. I found this design on the craftsy website. They have a blog they do and they show patterns and stuff. So I put this one on that little yellow gingham background. And you know my theory, why make one when you make two? Why make two when you make three? So there's a green one. And then, of course, in my eye, this is not only an apple, it's also a pumpkin. So I made a pumpkin and another pumpkin and another green apple. This is a really fun project to work on and you can see I changed up different backgrounds to see how it would look and to get a little different perspective on it. I really like the white against the orange. If you want something a little more subtle, I have the gray. It still allows the orange to pop. This one also has a fun light gray and it had a bunch of little, I think it has like ants or dragonflies or something has all these little white pieces on it. I tried to stick with the color from the apple or pumpkin or whatnot for the back. All six of these were made 100% from my scrap bin. I used the batting from my scrap bin and all the fabrics, the backing, the binding, the background, the little apples and pumpkins, everything came from the scrap bin. It was really fun to go through and pull out different fabrics and to just, just have a good time making it. Some of the fabrics are duplicate in both. If it was wide enough piece of scrap, I went ahead and cut two strips out of it. And other times there is just one of it. And again, when you're making projects like this, you can go ahead and incorporate anything you want into it. This one here is a flannel orange that I've been popping into different projects here or there. Because it's a mug rug or a little fun mini wall hanging, you can get away with using different type of fabrics within it. I get questions a lot, can I mix my fabrics? And I say, if you know what you're working with and you're prepared to deal with the different fabrics, you can go ahead and work with different kind of fabrics in a quilt. They did it in the past when they made the crazy quilts and they have lasted a long time. You just have to be prepared that certain fabrics may not last the, the test of time. That a polyester inside a quilt with something like denim or corduroy, it's not going to really last that long. But if you just want to make something fun to throw in the car, to take on a picnic, to play at the park, to go to the beach, then I say go ahead and mix your fabrics. As long as you're careful with your iron and you know you make sure that you're treating the fabrics properly, they do make quilts out of silk. They just need to put a little bit of an interfacing or stabilizer on the back so that that silk fabric is easy to work with and is now equal to the quilting cottons. So when you're working on a project like this, go ahead and mix and match it. If it's a wall hanging, it's not really going to matter that much as long as it kind of works together. I wouldn't want to take something, like I said, a heavy duty denim and a corduroy and add it to something really lightweight like a silk unless it fits my purpose, unless I needed it to, to highlight something here on my apple or something like that. So I do say use whatever you want. just. Be prepared and be cautious as you're working with those projects to make sure you're treating everybody properly. So I had a lot of fun playing in the scraps this week. You can look for these little mug rugs or mini wall hangings in my shop also. I haven't decided if I will keep any of them or if they will all go into the shop. We all know I have plenty of scraps over in my little rainbow collection to go ahead and make several dozen more. This of course didn't make a dent in it at all. So your scrappy word for today is pumpkin. We've tried having pumpkins here for Halloween. They just can't handle the heat. It's still just too hot in October and we get all those little gnat bugs all over. We've tried, we've tried the bleach, we've tried the Vaseline, we've tried sealing it and not cutting it right away, waiting to the last minute to get it. We've even had the 
foam pumpkins that we either just decorated with the foam pumpkins outside or I actually carved them up once one year and it's just not the same. It's nice to have them in the house and stuff but to sit down and carve a pumpkin even though all of my life every time I've ever carved a pumpkin as a child or with my children I mumbled and grumbled and complained the whole time because I do not like I don't like pulling out the seeds I don't like scraping the walls down and making them thin enough to cut coming up with design but at the end of that session I always feel better for having done it so my question to you is do you carve pumpkins or decorate with real pumpkins in the fall I have a feeling many of you guys do because you're in a cooler area than steamy, hot, humid Florida when Halloween runs around. Poor kids, it's even too hot for them to wear a lot of the costumes. I've noticed over the years more and more they are doing parties in churches or at some type of maybe a trunk or treat at the mall where you go either through the parking lot or you go inside the mall and you go inside where it's nice and air conditioned and the kids can stay cool. It's less and less going house to house unless you're in like gated communities. Those tend to still do door to door trick or treating. It could just be my area, but I have a feeling that it's probably like that all over. I know many of you in other countries don't do Halloween the way we do and that our holiday our celebrations are slowly creeping into your countries bit by bit. So I hope you're taking the best parts of it and having a good time and enjoying the fall. Because for me, I don't see Halloween as some evil, scary thing. I'm not into the scary movies and all that. I love scarecrows and pumpkins and, and the paper ghosts and stuff like that. I love the childhood version of it. So I hope everyone has an amazing creative week. I'll see you guys on Friday where we are going to work on our patchwork quilted drawstring bag. I smile every time I look at these. I just did one little quick line of quilting around it. I love taking strips together like that, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting off track again. I am saying goodbye. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the rest of your week. I hope your kids are enjoying school or everyone that hasn't started yet until September that you guys are enjoying the excitement of school shopping and getting school supplies and new backpacks and new shoes. I know it can be really expensive and stressful, but I always enjoy going out and getting some fresh brand new paper and notebooks and pens. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.